reading 1.5s looks at citation networks uh, among state Supreme Courts to see um, who is cited more across state lines, uh, women or men. And in order to provide some sort of context um, for this study, I want to discuss a little bit about the nature of common law in the United States, a little bit about jurisdiction, um, and about why citation across um, the states might matter. So the nature of common law in the U.S. Uh, is something that we borrowed um, from, from our English tradition. And common law simply means that decisions by judges uh, are law and that they're binding, depending on where they sit in the hierarchy, on other judges. So to give you some example from the federal system, um, when the United States Supreme Court makes a decision, that precedent is binding on all lower courts. Um, and so when a state Supreme Court makes a decision, that decision is binding on the lower courts within that state. Now, there is no prohibition upon citing other decisions outside of your jurisdiction to sort of um, bring light to a particular area of law that may not have a lot of precedent built up within your state. Um, so larger states, California, New York, Texas, Florida, handle a lot more um, varied issue areas than do smaller states, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming. And so those smaller states may look to other states to see if they've handled an issue before. And if they have, they will, they can choose to cite one of those courts' opinions as providing evidence of how that court should decide. Now, the difference here, when we look at the United States Supreme Court example and state court citing other state courts example, is the difference between jurisdiction. State Supreme Courts have jurisdiction over their state. The U.S. Supreme Court has jurisdiction over the United States. So when a state Supreme Court makes a decision, that decision is only binding within that state. But... Other state courts can cite that precedent as evidence, as being uh, an example of why the court in that particular state should make a decision. Now, this has to deal with two types uh, of um, precedence transference, vertical and horizontal. Vertical um, precedent transference or vertical citations are almost always binding. So when a lower court cites the United States Supreme Court, that's usually a binding precedent, which the lower court has to follow. But horizontal citations, so when a state court, uh, state Supreme Court cites another state Supreme Court, those sorts of citations are absolutely not binding. They can be used as evidence. And in many circumstances, you will be, you, a judge would be able to find citations from state Supreme Courts that disagree. So, for example, if you're in Wyoming and you're wanting to know how to decide uh, some particular case, you could look to California and Texas and find that those two courts have handled very similar issues, but handled them entirely differently. And that difference could be based on any number of things. Um, judges in California tend to be more liberal than judges in Texas. The law in California may just be very different than it is in Texas. California may have different constitutional protections than Texas does, but the state court in Wyoming is under no uh, requirement to cite either of those courts, and the choice of who to cite um, is dependent upon the judge themselves. There's, there's no guidance with regards to horizontal citations. Um, so this article looks at the sort of nature uh, of those citations and, and what sort of affects those citations. And what um, Dr. Gleason finds is that women are much more likely to be cited across state lines than men are, which is an, it was a very intu non-intuitive finding. Most of us assume um, that most judiciaries are, tend to be predominantly male, but what we know is that there are some predominantly female judiciaries. In fact, there are, I think, around 20% of judiciaries, state courts, um, state high courts in the United States are majority female. Um, and so this, this ability to transfer this horizontal citation uh, is much more likely, apparently, if, if the author of the opinion uh, is female. 
And that, that's an important finding. But the, this nature of network citation, so who cites who and who is a giving state and who is a receiving state, uh, in a common law system like we have in the United States, um, law can develop in any sort of number of ways. States can develop laws in, in, in very different ways, depending on how their constitution is shaped and depending upon the laws and the ability to cite other courts, even when that precedent is not binding on your court, is helpful because it allows judges to use uh, what pre other courts have already done to help them to decide their cases, which, which judges need help. That's the reason why judges ha allow amicus curiae to submit briefs. It's the reason why judges hold oral arguments. If you didn't need all of this information, judges could simply decide. But the fact that judges do decide via input is actually a good thing, and it makes it very unique. We need to remember that when judges write opinions, they're explaining why they decided a case in a certain way. This is a requirement that no other governmental official in the United States is bound by. Members of Congress don't need to write out why they voted a certain way. The president doesn't need to explain why he decided a certain way or instituted a certain rule. Only judges need to do that. And so the ability to cite to other areas of authority, other state courts who have already decided on, the, uh, on, a, on a given issue, is very helpful.